I'm going to try and introduce uh, this concept of six axis uh, correction. This is not necessarily a exam question, but this is something which is important uh, or will be important in terms of your concepts in uh, deformity correction. So, what is deformity correction? Because actually we are in, in real life deformities occur in uh, 3D space, deformities are corrected in 3D space. What we are seeing is only 2D, uh, two dimensional representations of three dimensional deformities. Now, if you look at <laughs> 3D space, where um, Y would be, you know, the, these two corners of the screen, uh, the line going that way would be X, the line going this way would be Y and a line coming straight out of the screen at you would be Z. So, any sort of point or object can be defined in 3D space in relation to its position uh, relative to these three axes. So, any deformity that you uh, see where you have a deformity in the AP and the lateral X-ray actually uh, is a deformity which is in a 3D space and it can be defined in relation to the Y axis, the X axis and the Z axis. So, how do you find this or how do you look at this in relation to a patient? Now, this is an AP X-ray where you are actually imaging the deformity um, in the frontal plane and if you look at the Y axis is here, the X axis is here and the Z axis is coming um, out of you. Now, if you turn this patient around for a lateral x-ray, um, the y axis is still looking up, but now the x axis which was there has turned um, towards you. So, a lateral x-ray will look like this, the y axis still pointing up, um, the z axis has now come this way and the x axis is pointing up at you. And finally, what you cannot see on the x-ray is the axial uh, view where you are now looking down the y axis or looking down the longitudinal axis of the bone and therefore, the y axis is coming out at you and the z and the x axis are there. <laughs> so, when you want to correct deformities, uh, you normally have basically just two kinds of movement. One is translation and the second is uh, rotation. So, even if you are talking of an angular correction, it is actually a rotation uh, which is occurring around a particular um, axis. So, if you talk of lengthening or shortening, it is a translation along the y axis. If you talk of transverse uh, movements in the frontal plane, it is sagittal along the x axis. And if you talk of transverse movements that is front to back, that is uh, in, in the uh, frontal plane along the z axis. And similarly, three rotations in the frontal plane, in the sagittal plane as well as the axial. <laughs> so, with a conventional uh, Elizarov system, if you have all three deformities existing together, angulation, a certain amount of shortening, a certain amount of torsion, uh, this can be well ac accomplished or corrected by the Elizarov uh, system in multiple steps. The problem is these steps are sequential and in between steps like this in step 1 you do a lengthening, in step 2 on the AP x-ray you do a correction, in step 3 on the lateral x-ray you do a correction and in step 4 you do the torsional correction. So, this is a sequential correction and requires a change of hardware at every step. <laughs> this can be done, all these steps can be done in one go by using a slightly different system which is basically an Elizarov system, but instead of multiple hinges and other devices in between the two moving fragments, you have a set of six struts which will do the same job. So, a uh, hexapod means exactly uh, what it says, hexa six pod legs. So, there is a set of hardware which is six struts arranged in this uh, V fashion. And because this movement is so complex, there is a software which directs that movement. What the software does is it accepts your inputs in terms of where is this frame in a 3D space by multiple measurements, what are the lengths of these struts, where are these struts connected and what is the size of the rings that you are connected to. 
the second thing it does is it you are able to tell the software that okay i want to do the movement around this point that is uh, where the fulcrum is what are the various movements that you want to do whether it's you know angulation in this plane angulation in that plane depending on the x rays and the software then tells you how much these struts have to be uh, adjusted and gives you a plan for over you know if you want to do it over 10 days each of the struts has to be adjusted by so much so and that that is what we call the schedule for correction so the hexapod is not something which is uh, new it's new relatively new in orthopedics but in real life it's been there around for a long time and basically a hexapod is something whenever you require precise placement of something in three dimensional space then you use a hexapod mechanism so when uh, pilots are training on flight simulators where they have you know rolling movements front and back movements uh, they are they are sitting on a platform which is sitting on a hexapod <laughs> when scientists are looking at uh, space with a telescope they are using a hexapod to direct the movement of that uh, telescope and a lot of your industrial robots and all today use hexapods uh, for placement so your three dimensional movements here with these same six struts you can do an axial movement which is lengthening or shortening <laughs> you can do transverse movements in either the sagittal or the frontal plane and you can do angulation that is as i told you a rotational movement in the frontal or the sagittal plane and you can do torsion that is rotate one set of rings um, relative to the other <laughs> so how does this this work in uh, clinical practice with this uh, girl who had a blounts had had a osteotomy at uh, age 6 but she had mainly a, a proximal tibial varus a certain element of um, rotation she actually almost 30 degrees of rotation and some amount, sorry so she had a significant varus in the proximal tibia um, a little amount of hyperextension at the knee which is probably not important in this particular situation and rotation so she had all the um, x-rays to sort of quantify the deformity which includes full length x-rays and calculated the rotational profile on a CT scan so that's her AP on a full length x-ray you can see that there is a significant medial uh, translation of the weight bearing axis if you draw the proximal mechanical axis and the distal mechanical axis you can see that while the deformity seems to be here the cora point um, is somewhere in the proximal uh, distal femur and this acute angle gives you the magnitude of the varus but because technically we cannot you know uh, do the osteotomy higher up in the sense that you require some place to hold it we do the osteotomy lower down and this is one of the osteotomy rules that we talk about in uh, Elizabeth of correction that when your um, <clears throat> when your osteotomy is lower than the cora point which you saw on the full length x-rays there will always be a certain amount of uh, translation so this is what the correction would look like if it was done um, correctly now this looks like a certain amount of uh, a translation which doesn't look too good but if you look at the axis the axis is properly restored many a time you would tend to sort of correct it with an open wedge or a closing wedge like this which looks all right but this is actually uh, two deformities which are cancelling each other out and if you look at the proximal axis and if you look at the distal axis they are not in the same axis the bone is not translated but the axes are translated if you do a translation in this situation you will get the axis perfectly restored but you will have a certain amount of translation but this translation is something which is really not important especially in children because if you cover up that translated portion now that tibia looks normal to you so the proximal portion of the tibia and the distal portion of the tibia are in the right anatomic placement to each other <laughs> so this is how we we put on an Elizabeth frame put on the uh, y connector 
on the AP and the uh, lateral views um, that is the data that is uh, put in. So, we had to correct a virus of uh, 27 degrees, um, some amount of translation and a rotation of almost 30 degrees. And that is the advantage of, of using a hexapod system that all of these three things can be done um, together. It shows us sort of visually uh, what the frame looks like and how it will look like when it is corrected and gives us the program for uh, the program schedule for distraction. Uh, this is one week post distraction. Now you can see that the angulation is correcting as well as the uh, some amount of translation is occurring. What you cannot see is that the rotation is also um, correcting. Uh, she we, we miscalculated she had a little bit of uh, over correction and this is again one of the advantages of the system if you have an over correction or if you have a under correction all you have to do is go back uh, to your x-rays reanalyze and add any additional so in this patient we we had done 7 degrees of over correction so we went into 7 degrees of uh, virus over a period of um, 7 days got the program again and at the end of that 7 days the leg was uh, properly aligned straight and properly lengthened. So that is her x-ray later full length x-rays um, at the end 3 weeks after the we just removed those distractors and put in regular rods so that the uh, bone now consolidates and you can see here this is the original bone and that is the original bone but nature is already throwing in bone on this side to take away this effect of translation. You will see it better in the uh, later x-rays that she is at the end of um, I think 4, 4 and a half months. This is already filling up on that side. Even the bump um, goes away and that is her um, final x-ray. So, you, you can see that the axis is well restored, rotations are well restored all with just one relatively simple frame. Thank you.